Okay, you ready? Yeah. Let me see. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hi. another episode of So Easy, So Fun with Sugar and Sweat. Oh my god, remember we used to always do those oh really annoying nasally voices? Thank god. Is it recording? I have drug blindness. It is. You know what you are, what you are. Honestly, we have been crazy. We are rushing to go to uh, Beverly Hills Housewives event. Can we say that? Yeah. Um, this has been the most hectic day. We're going to a party. Let's just say, cameras are rolling at the party we're filming, but only us without the cameras rolling before we go to get our own content. Well, no, I mean, this is my favorite part of the <laughs> night. Like, yes, we are going to our friend's pride party. It's the posse pride party. I'm such like living art right now. I can barely sit because the corset, so. Yes. Okay, well, let's get into our favorite top 10 forgotten dolls from the early 2000s. Now, y'all know us, we love all of the dolls from the 2000s. I mean, right. simply for nostalgia reasons. I mean, how many dolls are... I think what's more the question is, what dolls are still going from the 2000s? I feel like they're all kind of one and done of that era. Besides Bratz and Barbie, and certain girls have stuck around. Right, yes. of course. Well, of course. Well, let me see. I love that I have gloves on today. Spicy Kins has the nails. Because you know us. It could literally be a 20 minute video of just our nails falling off and... Right. Oh my god, your makeup's so pretty. You look like an actual fairy. Oh, you look so pretty too. Well, wait, before we get into the dolls, we should get into what she's giving. Oh, okay. Let's get into what she's giving, Miss Spice. Well, you know, I'm actually inspired. I feel like I'm giving very much... Girl, we'll insert sure. photos of your sickening I feel like I'm giving B. Goth doll right now. Honestly, okay. this is what we should start with. I mean, they're my favorite dolls at the moment. Let's start with B. Goth. Yes, because they inspired my look today. You know, I think like they're very trad goth, very, you know, authentically goth. And you know me, I've dipped my toe into, like, a darker Bratzal aesthetic. But this makeup right. is actually inspired by an amazing Bratzal repainter. Insert here. So, you know, I went to town, got inspired, but... We're giving me goth. I mean, I feel like you're, if we get into what she's giving, I think you're giving me Fairytopia Mermaidia. Yes, I, Miss Sugar, she is in her Fairytopia, Sugartopia era, should I say? I don't know if y'all can see any dim my yes. gloves today. We have the matching heel, baby. Yeah. You're giving very much that one Barbie with the hot, the pink hair and the green. Mermaid, isn't she over there? Don't you have her? She's over there. I'm too so lazy to get her up, girl. So the thing with Begot dolls is that at first, I didn't really like. It's not that I didn't like them. You know, you have to get into them. You know, and then I kind of expanded my artistic, aesthetic horizons. And then I was like, wait, these dolls are sickening. And honestly, they inspire me for my own doll line. I love how there's just like six of them. Storm is in every doll line. The thing with this doll line is that it really it shines a light on the dark underground of gothic subcultures because most doll lines, you know. A lot of them are for kids, so they're girly, unicorns, right. sparkles, bubblegum. But these dolls dare to be different. They were on the leading edge, bleeding edge, yes. if you will. A fashion, I mean, honestly, some of my faves would have to be Infinity Abyss with the fire engine red hair. All of Storm's dolls, the pigtails yes. are iconic. I actually really want this one really rare Storm doll. She has white hair with blue, and she's like schoolgirl. And I'm like, okay. I think I have to... Honestly, so much of them are inspiration for my looks, like upcoming. Like, I want to do a look like the girl with the green dress, just all the black squiggles. Like, they're just really fucking cool. No, they're amazing, and I didn't even know about them until you kind of put them on the map, because yes. Miss Device has been doing the Begot transformations. Uh, I do have to say... Uh, Sig Bunny, or Virtual... Yes, oh my god, those are my favorite right. dog girls. Yeah. Or Fishy, you know what? Is she Fishable or something? Something like that. Well, they're sickening, they're literally my favorite YouTubers. You would think I would know their Sig names. Sig Bunny something, and the two of them, they're like besties. I love their Yes, videos. we're gonna insert yes. them right here, girls. They don't I know, we're so like their biggest fans. I like, like all their Instagram photos, they probably think I'm annoying. I can't believe <laughs> I'm flopping. It's like virtual reality. I don't know, I only have two brain cells left. Fish right now. and Sig Bunny, I think that's what it is. Girls, if you're watching, that's why I wink, I can't wink. <laughs> Next up, coming in at number two on the list, we have 
Thai girls. Ooh. Now, the Thai girls, especially for us, they left such an impact. I'll never forget in fourth grade, we were on our way to vacation Bible school. Yes, and Miss Sugar and Spice, we were literally in vacation Bible we were school. The, I think we were the counselors. Well, yeah, we were the campers, and then in middle school, the counselors, and then in high school, we just stopped because, you know, just high school things. I love you getting into the details. The well, no, it's just a very vivid memory. Uh, in fourth grade, on our way to vacation Bible school, me repeating myself. We got them on the way. Yes, we, we, were obsessed. we got Punky Penny and Dads and Destiny. Yes, but honestly, who I need is Rock and Ruby. She's in all black, and they were so fun. I mean, the more fun thing about them probably was like the website. They were probably inspired by Redkins at the time, and they were interactive, but. I love just the plushy doll because it was like a beanie baby, but like a fashion doll mixed together. And they were just so glam and they were vet. They were well, sickness. they're the original Rainbow High dolls to me yes. because they all had a color. I mean, I remember when they started to evolve and we found the one store by us that sold them because they weren't really out of Toys R Us. You had to go to like a store that sold oh my God, we were obsessed with The website. Yeah. The website was so it was sickening. Like, Star doll But what I loved most about them was the fact that they were basically a uh, plushy with rooted hair. And for me as a little kid, and now I just need hair. We need the hair. And they're fun. I, I mean, I have them literally just thrown around my apartment. They're fun just to like throw around, yeah. But honestly, they're definitely the original Rainbow High. Later on, I see why they got discontinued because they got way too cutesy and like being, I don't know, the original ones, they were cunty. They were, well, that's do you remember the song? Oh, Thai girls, let's go, let's go, Thai girls. Let's go walk around the world. Okay, Shugs, what's the next line? The next line coming in at number three is Miss Holly Hobby. Now, this is a deep cut. Okay, I haven't seen any girls on YouTube talk about that. The girls don't talk about Miss Holly Hobby in front. Well, Miss Holly Hobby, that was an Easter gift for us, I think, yes. in like fourth or fifth grade. We were obsessed, but looking back, I mean... They're not cunty. Okay, right. that's the thing. I think a lot of people nowadays with dolls, they have to be super cunty and glamorous and blah, blah, blah. But that wasn't their objective. I mean, we were definitely their target demographic. I mean, not every doll. Certain dolls are cutesy and they, they were giving a different reason. You know what I mean? The well, well, thing about, you get one now. Do you need one now for your collection? Um, I would like to have her. I mean, she falls in line. Do you remember what were they called? The American Girl Dolls? Yeah. Gwen and Skylar that we had? Oh, like the, they weren't the, they were like Hopscotch, Hopscotch Hop School Girls. Hopscotch okay. Hill. Hopscotch Hill? Okay, well let's put that at number four. I remember we wanted an American Girl Doll so bad, but at the time our parents were not gonna get that for us. I mean, yeah. we were first grade. To get an American Girl Doll, that was like a big thing. You know what I mean? Yes, it was like bigger. Cute, yeah. But I will say, getting the Hopscotch School Girls, I think I had Skylar, you had Gwen, and we were obsessed. I brushed their hair. I thought it was so fun. They're cute. I not now, for me now, but back Well, then. I definitely need Gwen because she was my favorite doll. You don't understand because I played soccer my whole life, so I saw myself in her. Like, she had her little soccer uniform, and you know, she's not that cute, but she's just simply iconic with the bangs. She kind of looks like me. It's just give a butch. Well, the next forgotten doll line for me are Coming in at number five, we'll do. Okay, well, it's gonna be Bratzillas. I mean, they were more 2010 to 12, but we could group it into the 2000s, right? I mean, right. they don't exist anymore, sadly, but That's I've insane. gotten into them recently, and I think they're even better than Bratz. I mean, they're but not my tea because well, there's it. no sugary version. The the they're posable. They have glass and set eyes. They're gorgeous. I mean, y'all know if you're a fan of Spice, you know that Megana is like my ultimate. She's over there. Like she's everything to me. The fire engine, red hair, the pale skin. I don't know. I mean, obviously they were a Monster High, not knockoff, but competitor brand, and they kind of ate Monster High up sometimes. You know. Yeah. But the, the girls don't really, we need to put some respect on the Bratzilla's name. Yeah, I think a lot of people see Bratzilla's as just a Monster High knockoff or a copycat because that was very much a thing in the 2000s. Like, everyone was like, oh my god, my scene's copying Bratz, or, you know, there was always that tea. Well, and Bratz had the my scene, and then later on it was Monster High, and then MGA was doing Bratz. So Bratz, well, I mean, you know. you know, nothing, everything's been done, right? Well, thank so, God, thank God. Well, for the thank competition God. makes the dolls. More quality, right? Right. They're not really my tea. I feel like the only you might like the one. witchy ones. There's like the witchy. No, the mermaid. Ones. I have to do her look. She's going the dark. Fins. Yes, Miss Fiona Finn. Yeah. Okay, she is sugary. Yeah, she is definitely <laughs> sugary.
Okay, well, we have to like get out of here. Our friends are literally texting us like, where are you for this party? So we're gonna resume this video tomorrow. She'll be in drag and I'll be out of it, so. Okay. okay. Okay, girls, we just got back from the party. It's a couple hours later. We were gonna film the next part of this video tomorrow, but I was like, you know what? We're high, we're living our best life. Roll the cameras. We have a lot to say. Yeah, we just did a hit. I'm sure you could probably tell the difference. I think we need to do all these videos <laughs> under the influence. I mean, y'all got us earlier. That was peak professional work mode. We were doing TikToks, Instagram photos, hallway shots. The Uber was here. It was a lot, and we really wanted to make it on time for Jaden right. and Marley. I feel like I couldn't even talk earlier, so I'm so no, happy. We, we were kind chill. of like anxiety, but right? now we're gonna be like more chill. Just a little intermission before we get back. It's giving intermissions. We just want to give you an update on the night. Honestly, it was crazy, and we were talking about this off camera, but. Just walking in, I mean, y'all, the real fans know that we don't really leave our house like this, you know, oh, thank you yeah. guys. You know, I well, mean, we've been doing events recently. It's for, it's for good reason, you know, I feel like when I'm out in drag, I feel like other people aren't as present, because they're just so busy looking at the spectacle that I have on my face and around me, and then I can't be present, and the gays were drinking, it's like, oh, well, that's not going, true. I'd be going That's all not night. true that you can't be present, because I've actually, uh, it's a challenge for me, because it is a lot, because, you know, it's a barrier. I'll go out, and I'll try to be present, and I am, and it's great, but I sense others aren't, and right. that's yeah, uh, yes, hard. Yeah. I mean, we could both be present, but it's like, they're talking to Spice, but I'm still me, little old Luca underneath. Right. And, you know, we were talking about this off camera about imposter syndrome. And I feel like our imposter, imposter syndrome? Imposter. Uh, awesome. Awesome. It's not that I don't believe that people could think that I'm great. I think I'm great. I just don't believe that other people believe that I'm great as well. If that makes sense. Well, so out in drag, people like they put you on this pedestal. We're walking in, and immediately everyone you know, was I so wanted, nice. Everyone was so nice. I think you need a start. Deep down, there. I wanted to. For some reason, in the back of my mind, I was like, "Oh, I have to go." Like it was just, it was so sweaty. All this stuff. It was a great event. It was packed out. Yeah. But we had to leave for a second to go get our pictures because we started melting. Y'all like, hey, know us. We are full work mode. I mean, that's even why we left the Emmys early. Like, if we don't have our content, baby, like it's not worth it because. At the end of the day, this is my biggest passion. This is my art. The thing is, for me, I love going to events in drag. It's a great networking moment. Um, it's always fun. Just meeting new people. But if I wake up tomorrow and I don't have material of the look I created, then I'm not happy. I don't care about, you know, talking with, like, random It's like... No, this is what makes me happy, creating art for you, to share with you, because I know it's a mutual thing where we appreciate each other. I mean, that's why we never, basically, we just get our shit and we go. I mean, that's a typical drag queen thing. They go out, they get their drinks, they get the attention, everyone's living for them. That's the opposite But of that's why we literally are perfect to be social media queens, because I get to post my sickening sleigh, and I go on about my walk, and I don't have, and I can engage in it when I want to, but I can put it away when I want to. Uh, well, let's call it out right here. Well, can we just talk about how when we went outside to get the picture? Well, yes, wait, well, let me just uh, say one thing, because I actually like what you just said. Wait, now I'm forgetting. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. We love being social media queens because we actually don't have to face the uncomfortableness of being appreciated by others because that is such a foreign thing to us. Right. We right. are so on a positive that got vibration, so I won't even go into the negativity, right. but let's be real. It's a very uncomfortable thing for us and we want to abort, you want to leave the party, because God forbid people are being nice to you. Well, right, no, but you right. know. Well, yes, but also we're not used to that. We, right, we yeah. people don't understand. Like right. up until Drag Race, that was the first time people were seeing us in drag. And then, but even but even that moment, we were seen in drag and like we were torn to shreds. So it's right, like, it's yeah, we were yeah, never like, been yeah. But it just, it just it's honestly just being perceived in drag, being perceived in general. But in drag, you kind of have a target on yourself. I'm in these like ten inch heels, all this stuff. 
Right. So as Luca and Cooper, Cooper, we can kind of Luca and Cooper, we can kind we of can blend in more. Yeah. Blend in. But it was funny. We went out to go take our pictures, a little break moment. Then we saw Miss Laganja, Miss Gia. Miss Gia Gun goes to me. Ooh, I want to get pictures with the fishy one. She was pointing at you. I was like, <laughs> Oh, she's <laughs> sick me. And then we got. I couldn't pictures. hear anything. No, she was so funny. I don't even remember what she. And Laganja and Laganja. Yeah, we're gonna work with her on something yeah, special. Yeah, so we're working with Laganja again on something yeah, special. So that would be like. But out. um, so the doll is booked again but then we went inside I love booking the doll right I we, love booking the doll so they were filming something I don't know if we can talk about what they were filming exactly. oh at Jaden and Marley yes. yes but there was cameras up and we saw all the housewives I saw Brooke Candy we saw Snow White oh, Beyonce, Snow White. Oh, well, we have to get to our highlight of the night all the Drag Race fans watching Miss Naomi Smalls Miss Naomi Small Miss Naomi Smalls, you changed my life today. I don't want to go full Miss America, but honestly, well, tell them the backstory. She was performing. Okay, okay. well, yes. Naomi was sickening, and her foot is here. She was performing, and it was just so nice to see her on stage. She was inspiring me. I mean, I was like. Damn, like it was just she was giving ambiance and it was just giving sexy and cunty and it wasn't she wasn't doing just a random top forty song like yeah. you could tell she had taste and honestly just talking to her after in person and well no I, I we, let's just get into that performance moment I I, I don't want to uh, breeze over that get into what she's giving because for me I was watching her and I told her this after it was so inspiring because for once I finally saw someone give a fantasy right. that they were committed to and still perform. And I've always had resistance towards that because I don't want to give up, you know, wearing nails and wearing like an outfit that's not a performance right. outfit. She was still, she was performing, but it was and still she didn't drag. look like a drag. It was still a fantasy, and she doesn't look like a drag queen. I say that's that our favorite right. thing about drag. Like to me, high drag is when you don't look like a drag queen. It was just giving up a fantasy. It was beyond drag. It and it was beyond woman. woman, and it was just, it was so refreshing to see that fantasy, and you think this girl, because it was all this confidence she was exuding, and it was just, it was coming from her, and it was almost intimidating, and you think that girl on that stage is going to be like a bitch in real life, right? Because, of course, if she's posing all sickening, and she's right, fierce, yeah. and, you know, she's probably going to tell you you're ugly and go die in the corner. Hi, right, girl, let's get to the point. But her coming off stage... And to feel like a mutual appreciation for each other was like, whoa! I think that's what it is. And like, Naomi, if you're watching, I don't, you probably aren't, but like, she was my highlight of the night because talking to her, like, she's someone that's present. She looks at you in the eye and like, she was so. I've like, never met a present drag? Well, no, I know. <laughs> well, honestly, we've just dealt with like very like shitty LA drag queens. And most queens here, like, they're just gonna give you like a kiss on the cheek and keep it moving, but I can tell she actually wanted. To connect and oh, mind you, of course, we have met her out and about, just out of drag, at little gay functions, but we never really got to go in. And that's why I was having such a good moment with her, you as well. You were taking photos. But I felt overwhelmed because, like, there was so, I don't know, like, I was like, we need to have our own moment. So, Naomi. You know what? It was, like, it's just so nice when you meet other drag queens. And it's like, I felt like there was re mutual respect and we both love what each other do. I literally told her this and we we're like, no, girl, it's giving, like, we were friends in elementary school. <laughs> So, yeah, she's awesome. If you're watching and you're a fan of Naomi, um, stand forever. We stand forever. Yes. We love. But anyway, the rest of the night was fun. I mean, did anything else happen? Jaden and Miley were iconic. Um, I got a strawberry shortcake for a photo. Any other highlights on the floor? Right. We were. Okay, let's just get back into the dolls, right? Yes. All right, come on, girl. Wait, can you pat my lace down? I love it. No. The fact that we're still standing after this, like. I like your lace. No left? No, you're singing. You're good. Girl, they don't care anymore. Okay, y'all know. Oh my god, honestly, but like this might be annoying or. You know what? Let me spread a little light on this because I think people see a drag queen and they're seeing the outside and they're thinking, oh, they're flawless or confident or whatever. But honestly, today I was in my head because. Girl, you I were so in your head, yeah. I wanted to slap you. Before we left, I. Uh, uh, before we left, I was like, I'm just insecure. My forehead looks too big or too small or just the hairline. You know, in drag, it's very easy for the wig to be down too low and you're giving Teresa Judice or Sue back and you're... Who's someone with a big forehead? I don't know. I just felt like it was so... Oh, Fianna. The Bratz Fianna. 
Right. We call it drag blindness, cause, but also it's like I created an art piece and it was in my head and then sometimes you're looking at you it You don't have to like, defend weird. yourself. This isn't just putting on an outfit, it's an image I have in my head and then I'm putting it on myself and I'm taking it in and it's not that I don't like it, but sometimes you gotta step away, the artist has to step away from the art piece to admire it, so sometimes, like tomorrow I'll be living for this outfit, but in the moment I was like, kind of in my head and all that stuff, so. And you shouldn't be, and honestly, this is one of my favorite looks you've done, and it was oh, so gaggy. You. And no, you were, like, gorgeous. Like, everyone was, like, running up to you and, like, oh. rambling about how gorgeous, but, like, this highlight was popping. It was... It's my signature. I did a little TikTok, and I exposed my highlight combo. All right, well, let's get into well, the Diva Stars next. Okay, so Diva Stars, I remember wanting one so bad. I think we were in, like, second or first grade, and I think we did get one after going to a bunch of different stores and the one I think her name is Miranda uh, or maybe Alexa and she has the pink dress with the little uh, polka dots and she was just Y2K realness and I know a lot of people think they're ugly and we were looking but like you have to get into their fantasy and then you live. Yeah, I actually want an OG one, but our friend Eddie actually has uh, one of the OG Diva Stars at his place and whenever I'm over there, I just live because they're just so iconically ugly in the best way. So they're kind of, <laughs> that's what I say about you. Uh, next up, we have Only Hearts Club. Again, I never see There is any no girls. contest about only Hearts Club dolls. Okay. Are we exposing ourselves as like the true doll nerds? Right. Like, I, mean, I feel like people okay. don't know the extent of like how- uh, I think they know. Well, we don't- Well, no, now we're finally embracing the doll content and right. we're, now we're actually gonna be making content that we really, really like. Like we- Not that we weren't before, but we always felt like we couldn't actually oh, make- Oh, last. Okay. Let me lift them back up. Oh, they're falling? Yeah, they're falling. Girl, I'm just high. No, okay. you have dry blindness. Um, that needs to be a short I mean, drag blindness. I mean, in all honesty, sometimes they give a little horse girl energy, but at the time, back in elementary school, they were so cute and they had all these little accessories and things. Yeah, no, I love them and they're, they're plushy too and yeah, their eyes are a little beady and yeah, they they're have kind of American girl hair. They're kind of American girl And lots yeah, of they're not really like, cunty, cunty and fashiony, but they're wholesome and we love them and I have really good memories. Well, they kind of give the next girls a little bit of a moxie girl tea. <laughs> the moxie. Well, that was our iconic summer. We were going into sixth grade. We thought brats were never coming back. And we were finally back into brats again. And we were devastated they weren't out. And we couldn't buy dolls on eBay or Amazon because we would have to ask our mom to do the card. And, right. you know, at the time we could only get dolls on our birthday or Christmas. So it was very few and far between. So we had to really decide what we wanted if we were going to make the quest to, like, convince our mom to go to the store. And, like, it was a whole thing. And I remember Liv Dolls, Moxie Teen, Moxie Girls. No, we got Liv, we got two Liv Dolls and two Moxie Girls. And that was before Moxie Teens, which are sick name, but that's a whole nother video. But we were obsessed, and honestly, people like make fun of. Are we talking about Moxie Girls or Liv? Well, we could talk about both, to be honest. Right. I mean, they were right. They came out at the same time, and. Looking back, I'm like, oh my god, that was my childhood, but I thought I was so old. I was like, oh, I'm in middle school. Like, this is me being an, an adult collector. But I've, like, been through a child. Well, the Liv Dolls we loved because they're, the Liv Dolls are the OG drag queens. Yes, they I have. said Cinderella was the OG drag queen because the godmother gave her hips and, you know, a gown. But the Liv Dolls, you know, you could switch out their hair. Looking back, they're a little creepy looking, but I'm not mad. I mean, we had they so many like the, so the Sophie one gives like Miley Cyrus Love so Liv, much. love Moxie. Next up, I forgot what number we're up to because girl, it's been a long night. We have Miss Betty Spaghetti. Is this number one? Is this the last one? Um, we'll do a few more. Let's, whatever we have left. I, I don't even know if it's a I think it is the last it's one. Just, we're just kind of listing the ones that... It's a conversation, know. right? Right. Well, Love Betty Spaghetti, what do you think about her? I mean, she comes up and then she's out to get there. I mean, an icon. I mean, it's very rare that I like dolls that don't have actual rooted hair. I mean, the later ones did, but she was given, she was given plastic fantastic. Yes, and I love the purple girl. Yes, it was like they're like cowgirls or something. Yeah, and I definitely want to do a Betty Spaghetti look. I'll have to finesse some sort of wig, plastic. I mean, the only thing that I might kind of give like Australian drag where they wear like the plastic. Yeah, but certain things are cute for a doll. No, 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 no. You can't let. Another drag queen doing something really poorly stop, stop you from, from doing, doing something, something 
amazingly. But that's anything in life. You know, like, people are always like, oh, I want to start a podcast. But then they're like, oh, there's so many. It's like, no, girl, we need your take and your version and your perspective. I mean, I feel that's the, even like me with music, it's like, Every drag queen, every person in LA, everyone has a song. Your girl, it's not every drag, it's every girl. But why am I gonna stop myself from doing music just because other people are doing it? Like, if anything, that's more reason to do it. Like, stop on these girls, show your unique self. Yeah. I think we get to this? I we always know. end up inspirational. Honestly, what are the other dolls um, before we go? There were. Oh, Betty Spaghetti, she's cute, so. But oh, I, trolls! Oh, trolls. Is this oh my god, we were trolls. obsessed with trolls. I had Topaz, you had Amethyst, but looking back, I need Onyx or Ruby. Yeah, trolls were really fun. I think the dolls didn't make that much noise. It was more of like a show. They were the. Dolls fell on deaf ear. Like they only have one line. But we loved any single random little line. Like we loved remember those Jack specific like kind of Lolita dolls? That was like four yeah. of them. Or La Di Da. La Di Da. Well that was more two thousand tens. That's the next video. But um, no girl was just kind of discounted doll, just whatever. Any doll that had a backstory or there's multiple or <coughs> kind of the brats format <coughs> we loved. We were all about we were like, okay, I'm gonna have my favorite sugar's gonna have We love Okay, so the camera died. We're going to do a part two because we realized there's actually so much more dolls we need there to talk about. a lot. <laughs> there's so much, but thanks for coming over to Sugar's World, and I guess... Well, girl, but this isn't Sugar's World. This is so easy, so fun. Well, we're in Sugar's World because we're in her apartment. That's why I was saying that. Yeah. Bye. 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 We'll see you in the next one. More coming because we're in our doll content era.